Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software and I'm, this is a beginner's guide part 8 and in this tutorial I want to be looking at the filter gallery which can be accessed from this bar along the top now before I actually access that, I just want to show you there are a couple of ways to access the filters, one being from this button up here, and the other one is from the effects menu up here on the top left. If I click on that, you can also access the filter gallery from this point, or you can access individual filters from this list here. So if I go to distort then you have all the different types of distort filters. Now one that I've seen used quite a lot and quite effectively on images I've seen online is where you get a, a landscape image like the one I've got here of the Alton Tower and if it's got a nice level horizon nice and straight and it has a few buildings in it you can make the um, make it into sort of circles so they they join up one the left hand side joins up with the right hand side it can look quite effective so I'm going to click on that one and as you can see here it's stretched and rotated this round admittedly there is a sort of bad join there where they don't match up and again through the sky but with a bit of tinkering you could probably merge those two together and also you have up here the options of, of it's currently set on rectangular to polar or you can go polar to rectangular which will make it look like that now what I'm saying here, th this particular filter you've, you've accessed it via the effects menu and it's like a standalone tool. And if I clicked OK, it would set that as the image. I will cancel that and go back to the beginning image. If I again come up to effects, but this time come down to artistic and pick, for example, old master. This does actually open the filter gallery and it's slowly processing that filter. Some filters take longer than others. It depends on how much needs to be done. So while we wait for that to go along, I will just increase the size of this so you can see it better. So there you can see it has made the image look like an old master. Um, not to my personal taste, but I will now reduce that back down in size and then cancel it. So as you can see from the effects menu, some of them will open up as individual tools and some of them will open up the filter gallery. Now if I, I'm going to get rid of this picture because I only really wanted to use it to show you the, um, the polar distort option. I'll just get rid of this. Now this image here is far better than my image. I got this off the internet from a free image website called pixabay.com which is P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com and I'm going to be using this from now on to show you the filter gallery. So if you just click on filter gallery the image that you have currently open will be placed inside the filter gallery and if any of you have seen my previous two videos the first one about importing um, using the import raw panel and the photo fix panel which looked very similar this also has a very similar look and feel to it 
there's not as many options along the top here. You have only the option to clone a selection, then you've got the undo, redo, then you have the split screen so you can see what it looked like before and what it looked like afterwards and the zoom in in and out and zoom to a selected area so if you wanted to quickly look at a selected area it will zoom in we'll just zoom back out again okay so there's not as many options as the import raw and the photo fix but they are they are the same as the ones that, that, that are there so if you've used one of those other tools you should know how these work as well on the right here you have all the different filters so for example if we go back up to distort you do have the polar coordinates one which was a standalone tool from the effects menu so i could click on that with this image as you can see it is the same and then down here below these images and options you have the actual way of altering each individual filter so like the previous one this was now rectangular to polar or you can go polar to rectangle now the beauty of using the filter gallery rather than going through the effects menu sometimes is that if you don't know what it is you're looking for you can just continue to click on any one of these options and then it will change it accordingly to the one you pick and below that will be the controls to alter that particular filter I'm not going to alter any that much I might alter the odd one or two along the way but I'm um, basically uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on two or three in each one just to show you the different types of filters so the last one I'm going to use in the distort is the cylinder distort which sort of stretches it vertically so I'll close down the distort options and go to blur options now I've got the zoom blur here now the one option you can see here obviously you can change the intensity but you can also select the origin from where it is zooming from so I click on that and then come in here and then click somewhere say here on the left it will now zoom from the left hand side or if I click on that tree there that tree will be in focus and the zoom will come from that point um, radial blur I'll just make it around again you can select the origin point from where it radiates from so that's the last I'll look at on the blur options sharpen well there is only one option unsharp mask which will just add a bit of sharpness to the image the edge options there's only three here I think there's more in the effects menu I think there's about five or six edge options in the effects menu but the three they have here I might as well look at all of them as it all there's only three of them that finds all the edges and highlights them this makes a sort of glowing almost infrared type image and the trace contour just basically got the very fine edges so I'll close that one come down to noise now you can add noise which is all these speckles to the image if you want to make it look a bit oldy woldy type image but if you've made this sepia you could then get all the uh, grains on there to make it look like an old picture median just sort of blurs the image so that's the last I look on the noise render then you've got diffuse glow it's not 100% certain what that is doing 
and the lens flare again you could reposition where the lens flare is going to be you could add like some sunlight in the sky you can change the different types of camera lens that it's tr trying to simulate um, closing that, that down coming to where is it? Oh, where is it on? Stylistic. Now you can do emboss, which makes it look like it was a sort of hammered out on a piece of metal. Comic book, which is one I quite like, which gives it sort of like black outline around a lot of the areas. So it looks like it's been drawn for a comic book, hence the name. You do a page curl. Again, I think you've got all the options here to how far you want to change things. Um, Solarize is another quite good one if you want to do an infrared image. You can change how much it alters. Um, tiles. That's a pretty nasty one in my opinion. Um, and then let's go to other. Now you can change it to black and white. Gradient map, which is again just black and white, but you can change how it ch alters from black to white. Um, maximum and minimum. This just makes it sort of fuzzier and lighter, and less fuzzier and darker by the looks of it. And the vignettes. It's this grey uh, border here. You can change the colour of the vignette, and how much it blurs, and even the the region that's going to be where the vignette sort of comes out from. And then the last one is artistic, which is all the different um, painting styles. A good one here is pencil. It looks like a hand drawn image which is quite good and then you have all the others like we already looked at um, old masters but you can go for an oil painting so as you can see this going directly to the filter gallery especially if you don't know what the end result it is that you are looking for means that you can go through them all within this gallery rather than going down through the effects menu and picking some that may work as standalone tools and some that will open up the filter gallery anyway so you, you might as well just to a lo large extent just go straight to the filter gallery now the other last thing i want to just point out is which i have pointed out before on the previous two videos that if you click on this sp sp split sc screen you can look at what it looked like originally and how it ended up and then you can move this line left and right to have a better look you can also do it that way again you can move the line or you can look at them side by side the before and after shot and the last one is both images one above the other so basically that is the, the look at the filter gallery I'll just reduce it in size so you can still see that the original version is still there in photo plus untouched so if I click on the OK button the program will then convert your choice and any alterations you may have made using the options below and it will change that image by adding the filter to the image and then you can either work on it some more or you can just save the image however way you want to do it but if you do save it be it as a save as or export don't forget 
to use a different name so you always have the original there in case you want to work on it at a later date and use different filters or edit in a different way so my, as always I would advise you to pick a new name and keep your old originals safe right that is all for this video thank you very much and goodbye